If you recall, back in April, we went to an Acer event where they unveiled the world's first Chromebook with a number pad on the actual keyboard deck. Shortly thereafter, HP also announced kind of a Me Too device and said, hey, we're, we're gonna put out a 15 inch Chromebook with a number pad too. And so it kind of became a race to see who was actually going to get to market first. And honestly, surprisingly, HP has made it to market already and their Chromebook 15 with a number pad on it has been available now for a few weeks and we're already starting to see sales and specials and all kinds of stuff. So we wanted to take a deeper look at it and help you decide whether or not this Chromebook is the Chromebook for you. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN and they are the VPN of choice for millions of users because regardless of your device, they will keep your browsing secure and safe whether you're at home or out and about on the go. If you'd like to learn more about them and their service, go to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN. So with the Chromebook 15, HP's done a couple things different here. First, they've put out their first 15 inch Chromebook. So that's something of note. I mean, we're kind of getting into a crowded space here. Acer now has multiple 15 inch Chromebook variants. HP now has a 15 inch Chromebook. We have the really fantastic Lenovo C630, the Yoga line of Chromebooks that are out. And then you know, Lenovo's even got some coming with number pads and stuff like that in a new line that they've teased out in some YouTube videos. So. The 15 inch Chromebook space used to be completely devoid of Chromebooks and now we have all kinds of different choices here. And so when we look at HP's offering, we kind of need to look at it through that lens, through, through price and through all the features it brings to the table and try to decide, you know, is this a device that's actually worth your time, worth your money? Because ultimately, if all that you care about is having a number pad on a Chromebook, you still have multiple options. It's just at this point right now, this one is the only option. So let's go through this thing point by point, just like we do in a normal review and talk about all the pluses and minuses that this one brings to the table. So let's start off with build quality. If you've seen the HP Chromebook X360, you kind of know what we're dealing with here. You've got HP's signature language for design going on with the ceramic like lid and then aluminum interior and then a plastic bottom. And it is two colors. So you have a white lid and a gray bottom. And I think this looks a little better than the X360 did. That one polarized a little bit and some people loved it and some people didn't like it. I, I personally liked it, but a lot of people didn't. And I think with the gray and white, it's, it's just a little less off-putting for people that don't like two-toned laptops. But in general, the thing is built really well. Uh, no creaks and no floppy hinges going on. Everything feels good, solid, and put together in a way that doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart. And so with Chromebooks in this price range, this is kind of a mid-priced Chromebook, you kind of are starting to expect a better build quality overall. And I think HP is delivering that here. It's nice and thin at a 15.6 inch screen. You expect kind of a big clunky device and it just doesn't feel that way. It feels slender. It looks good on the desktop and at just around four pounds, that sounds kind of heavy, but again, for a larger Chromebook, it's a manageable weight and it fits in a backpack really nicely. Once we open this up and get inside, you're met with a full HD 15.6 inch, 16 by 9, 1080p, IPS wide viewing angle screen with great colors and very minimal bezels. And what's really nice about the bezels and the way that it's put together is it helps reduce the footprint a little bit of this slightly large Chromebook. And all those things are great. And I love the way that looks. I love the way that all performs. Where it kind of falls down just a little bit is in the brightness category. And unfortunately, this is a troubling trend from HP lately. We're getting these screens that have great color and viewing angles and all the right things in place and small bezels and then don't have enough brightness really to back them up. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're in a standard living room or you're at a coffee shop or something like that, you're probably not going to have too much issue. Now, you will have to have the brightness probably at 75, 80% almost all the time. But the minute you go outside or you go too near a window or you're under office lighting that's bright and harsh, you're going to run into all kinds of glare and reflections and you can try pushing that brightness up as much as you want. It's never going to be quite enough. And that's just a bummer. I, I, I'm not expecting 400 nit panels and I'm not expecting you know crazy resolutions and I'm not expecting super high refresh rates or something like an iPad Pro in a device in this price bracket 
What I do expect is something closer to like 300 nits so that you don't have to battle lighting environments all the time. And so that's kind of a shame and it's the only real knock I have against the screen in this device. Moving on down, we have what's become another trend of HP's, which is great keyboards and great trackpads. This one's not a glass trackpad and I do wish they would have brought the glass trackpad over from the X360. It's definitely plastic, but it's textured in such a way that I didn't have any issue with it building up oils. I didn't have any issue with any of the multi-finger gestures. And as we're now starting to have, you know, virtual desktops and so four finger gestures as well, no issues with any of those things whatsoever. The keyboard is backlit. The keys feel great. It feels very similar to typing on an X360. And then you get the addition of the number pad on the right side, which is honestly going to be the reason some people go out and buy this thing. If you're a number cruncher, you deal with spreadsheets, you have to input numbers for whatever reason, and you really have been waiting for a number pad. Again, this is the only Chromebook on the market right now with one. We're assuming we'll see Acer's come out pretty shortly, but for right now, this is the only one in the game and it's a great keyboard. So it feels like a great number pad as well to go with these input devices. So overall input, methods on this particular Chromebook are just a win. Around the sides of the device, uh, we have a really familiar port selection here because honestly, this device is built on the same baseboard as a lot of other Chromebooks we've reviewed, the Dell, Inspiron, the HP X360 we've already talked a lot about, the Lenovo C630, all of those devices are built off the same baseboard as this device. So you've got a USB type A, which gets you out of that dongle life, a USB type C on either side, Kensington port, micro SD card slot, headphone, microphone, Jack. So no surprises there at all. You do have a speaker port and grill right above the keyboard and they house decent speakers. And that again has become this trend with HP of having these B&O branded speakers right on the keyboard deck and right there in your face. And you kind of expect this really huge full sound and, and get a decent sound. I mean, they're okay for laptop speakers, but I really am excited about one day being able to open up an HP Chromebook with B&O speakers on it and then really making me go, whoa, those sound amazing. Kind of, you know, like the Acer Chromebook 15 or the Pixel Slate. Those speakers, as soon as I turned them on, I was like, wow, this is, this is impressive. I've just never had that experience with HP, unfortunately. One other thing you'll notice on this device is a fan port. And this thing has to have vents because it is a fanned device. And just like the other devices we just mentioned that are on the same baseboard, this one comes with processors and choices that necessitate a fan. I didn't hear them kick on very often and they were plenty quiet when they did. So I don't think that's an off-putting thing, especially for a big laptop like this. Uh, but you know, if you're in the market for a nice silent Chromebook without fans, you need to know that this one does come with fan processor options. Finally, let's talk about internals. Inside this thing, we're looking at an Intel 8th gen Pentium Gold chip paired up with four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. There is a version of it that is available only at Costco and Sam's, it seems at this point, and it ups it to an i3, so still an 8th gen core i3, fanned i3, U-series processor, and 128 gigs of internal storage. We're gonna talk about pricing on both of those here in just a second because it fluctuates pretty wildly. But in general, you need to know that either one of these processors is gonna do quite well for just about anybody. In general, the Pentium Gold hasn't been in a lot of devices that got into people's hands, so nobody really knows what to expect of it. But looking at benchmark scores and stuff like that, we can freely assume it's gonna get between 20 and 22,000 on Octane. So that puts it in the class of processor where you're not really gonna have to think too much about whether or not it's gonna be able to handle certain things you throw at it. Pretty much Linux, Android apps, web apps, all that kind of stuff, general Chrome OS stuff, it's gonna handle really well. My main hang up with this device is that regardless of the internal processor, it only comes with four gigs of RAM across all models at this point anyway. And that's kind of a bummer, honestly. And it takes away from some of the performance gains you get with that Pentium Gold chip or that Core i3 chip. For a lot of users, you're not really gonna notice it. For power users though, people like to have lots of tabs and apps and stuff like that open. You're gonna notice stuff closing in the background every once in a while, and that's kind of a bummer. All right, so last but not least, we need to talk about pricing because as with just about every other Chromebook on the market, pricing is pretty volatile at this point with this device. 
The MSRP on it is $450. I would tell you never pay that for this Chromebook because at $450, there's too many other devices that dip down into that price range that I think are better devices overall than this one is. But MSRP isn't exactly the asking price. Matter of fact, if you look around right now, you'll probably see this device listed for $379, just about everywhere, New A, Walmart, Office Depot, Amazon. I don't know where they agree upon these things when they have MSRPs. Maybe they just mark it up so they can mark it down. I'm not sure, but 380 seems to be about the going price for this. And at that price, I think HP has put together a pretty compelling package here because there are not a lot of devices you can get for sub $400 on a regular basis without having to go look for a special deal. And you get some aluminum build here, you get an IPS panel, you get the number pad, you get backlit keys, you get a nice trackpad, you get a touch screen, you get a very good processor and a decent amount of storage. So that puts together a nice package. For us, we ended up getting the Core i3 model on a one day sale at Sam's for $400, which is $150 off its MSRP. And it does the same thing. At $550, it's hard to recommend because there's a lot of good Chromebooks for $550, even on a regular basis without finding sales. So at that price, I would tell you to go look somewhere else and probably get a different device. But when it dips down into that four or 450, to get a Core i3 and 128 gigs of storage and a number pad and a backlit keyboard, the list kind of adds up and you go, yeah, oh, that's, that's actually a pretty good deal. So price informs just like it always does with this device. It's just usually we have to wait till months after a device comes out, but it seems like this one's already just jumping into the market and jumping all over the place with its price. And so be a smart buyer if you're wanting this, if you're deciding that, hey, I want a 15 inch Chromebook, I like the way that one looks, or I need the number pad, be informed as you go into that buying decision and make sure that you don't pay MSRP for this because I think you might feel a little disappointed with that price range. But if you get it down into these other ones, 380, 350, $400 for the Core i3, 450 even I think for the Core i3 model, I think you're gonna be satisfied with your purchase and feel like you're getting a lot of Chromebook for the money. But guys, that's it for this one. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure to hit the notification bell as well if you'd like to be notified when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.